स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया and composites myself dr shumana gupta from indian institute of technology department of architecture and regional planning i have offered this course mainly to the students of architecture and this is a very compulsory course which all architects would be architects need to know as you are stepping into this subject into this trade you need to know the materials which actually help in building up the built form in and around you for which you will be responsible for its aesthetics not only its beauty but also its functionality and its continuous exposure to the environment you see lot of buildings around you they may be temporary in nature say a cycle shed or a temporary shop and there are buildings which are permanent in nature like built forms hospitals schools residences etc and when you get into the design process you know the details the functions etc but when the entire design takes up the actuality when it comes up you have to also recommend what material are to be suggested for each and every portion of the building be it the structure itself be it the finishing be it the glasses be it what kind of be it whatever kind you can think of like a chemical laboratory will have a different kind of finish then again the hospital interior will be different again a kitchen interior within a hotel will be different like five star hotels will have a different set of finishes but remember all these buildings have to stand on a foundation and the basic materials may be similar in similar kind of climatic conditions so the first part of this course will be concentrating on the basic materials like the bricks the stones the clay materials the glass timber concrete etc but at the same time we need to know the advancements we have to know precast concrete which is a fast dry system of construction building material technology promotion center that is bmtpc works in india for promoting such kind of prefabricated items and already the central public works department includes 16 such materials into the and with the specifications so you as students need to get aware of such precast items which actually enhance or quicken the way of construction it is a dry construction where which involves less of water but yes it is much different than our conventional ways of construction you as architects need to recommend it you as architects need to bring these materials or promote these materials into the construction world so a module is dedicated for that this entire course is an eight module course that we, that is it will run through eight weeks and each module will have five lectures and i have tried to keep keep it module wise it will be dedicated to one aspect so with a brief introduction we will move to clay and clay products stone then to timber and engineered wood then to glass and the different kinds of glass and then concrete which will include fine aggregate coarse aggregate cement making of concrete etc we have a dedicated module for ferrous and non ferrous metals 
Here I would say that buildings experience both tension and compression. Further, it is subjected to lateral loads. So, we have to know the use of metals in a building. Metals are very difficult to extract. It has a lot of embodied energy in it, but yes, they have 100 percent reuse value and much longer life. So, we also need to know how ferrous metals that is iron rods, iron bars which you may have seen exposed, kept exposed on sites, you may be inquisitive to know what or the applications of these materials into the world of buildings. So, building materials this fundamental course will be a tool for you or a weapon for you to carry forward or build up your profession. We also need to know paints, plastics, nanotechnology that has been included into the world of material particularly which are used in the building which, which are used in the building industry. So, we will also try to cover those. We have damp damp proofing that is building maintenance water is a big enemy. So, how to do that? We have to know how to take care of the thermal insulation because we in our country maybe in Indian context we are not having that adverse thermal changes, but yes very cold countries have much use of thermal insulation. We also use it in some particular cases. We also use thermal insulators similarly as sound insulator. We will also try to give a small introduction to those materials in this course. So, this course will be a mix of the conventional materials, the advanced materials and composites which usually is covered in two semesters in a regular college course. So, thank you and I wish you all will enjoy this particular course. Welcome to all who have enrolled for this course building materials and composites. I am Dr. Shumana Gupta as a faculty of the Department of Architecture and Regional Planning Indian Institute of Technology Kharagpur. So, our course is an 8 week course and it has 8 modules. It will run through 8 weeks where 5 lectures will be given in each module and I have tried to frame it in such a way so that we can cover our architectural subject of building materials and composites in this period. So, I will come to the contents and here there are two terms one is building material and other is composite where building material directly refers to the materials which are used for the construction of buildings and composites are also made also similar materials when two or more materials combine together to form one material. Remember it is not composition of a material, but when two different materials combine it forms a composite. Now, our first lecture of this module would be introduction to the course as we have no other way to introduce to the course before we move to the several components of the module 1 which will be clay products and stone. So, concepts that will be covered in this course will be as follows clay products and alternate items like fly ash, compressed earth blocks, compressed stabilized earth blocks, stone, stone tile, stone dust blocks, wood and engineered wood, glass and glazing systems, ceramic tiles, vitrified tiles, fine aggregate, coarse aggregate, cement and concrete. So, this is module 4. Then we come to precast items, flooring, roofing, walling systems hollow block concrete, aerated autoclaved concrete, 
ferrous and non ferrous metals, damp proofing material, insulation, paints and lastly we have plastics, composites, nanotechnology applications into building materials. So, as you can see that the concepts covered are quite huge, we will have to structure our lectures in such a way so that you can get the maximum benefit out of it and at the same time you will be equipped with all the types of materials which an architect has to come across while planning or recommending for the building you are going to design. Now before coming to materials, we are to concentrate mostly on the permanent structures. But there are a lot of temporary structures where also application of materials can be seen. So, how can we define temporary structures? It can be dismantled and used again once it is reset. So, the obviously the materials should be light in weight, it will take lesser time for construction and it will not be similar to permanent structures. These structures may require a very low foundation or not so stable foundation. Like you can see pandals in your surrounding, you can see festivals going on in temporary structures, fairs are also happening, you can see booths coming up for some particular purpose, say election and then it is disappearing. It may be any kind of temporary event where such temporary structures may come up. However, we as architects need to know these materials also and also more towards the permanent structures. Now, particularly for temporary structures, what could be the materials? They could be like bamboo, it could be steel pipes, the fabrics like we call use the tarpaulin to cover it, maybe plywoods to define the spaces, plastic sheets to cover the roof, it may be use of acrylic sheets, uh, sheets, it may be temporary shops coming up where you can put acrylic sheets, it can be cycle sheds, it can be bus, bus stands where we can use iron sheets also. So, these also are applied in permanent structures, however, we confine only to the temporary structures using such kind of materials. So, the key word is they are using low time of construction and they are not that way that is it is not having lot of weight. But when we look into the permanent structures, it must have a foundation and it should live for a longer period of time and at the same time it must protect you from all the weathering actions that is happening in the atmosphere or in the surrounding that may be wind, that may be rain, that may be excessive sunlight. So, you must be protected, you must protect the habitat inside the building, the users of the building against all these natural calamities. So, the building or the structure will be subjected to lateral loads and it should be capable of withstanding that. More time of construction and obviously it is a complex process and it is very difficult to dismantle it. Usually metal materials are rigid and it is having higher weight compared to temporary structures. They are fixed and fixed to the ground. Reuse of the materials is only partially possible. Say you can retrieve some wooden frames from the window or maybe some iron rods from the floor from the castings or maybe some bricks from the walls. So, these examples are the permanent structures like offices, institutions, schools, colleges, hospitals, etc. The buildings where we as architects need to confine or need to study. So, brick, concrete, stone, wood, steel, aluminum, glass, plastics, these are mostly the materials used for building up such permanent structures. So, we will concentrate mostly on these items. Now, again 
we come to another aspect. Amongst the permanent structures, we have load bearing structures, where we see a picture on your left hand side, the load is taken by the entire building. You can see it is made of brick and the building is not so high and the foundation in such kind of buildings is a continuous foundation and even you can see the windows, the top of the windows where usually a concrete beam or a lintel called a lintel is seen in modern buildings. Here you see it is also made of brick. So, this is a load bearing structure where the brick is transferring, taking the load of the building and is transferring it to the foundation directly. So, here you need a continuous foundation and this can be 2 to 3 story high and sm spans are not so huge. Span means from one end or one side of the building, to one support of the building to the next support. So, here between the two walls or the sub supporting walls which on which the slab or the floor plate raise, rests is not that huge. Coming to the framed structures, structures where loads are transferred to the foundation through beams and columns. Here you can see the picture where you can see the columns and the beams are visible and you can see some supporting structures are there, the orange colored rods which you, which you can see here. These are supporting the floor because the casting is going on and these columns and beams there is no wall. So, these columns and beams transfer the load to the foundation. So, the foundation is holding or supporting individual columns. Now, the foundation may be continuous because the columns may be very close. So, there are various other different types of foundations which we are not cons not discussing because that is not the content of the course. So, you will if you want to make high rises, multi level structures, large span structures, you have to add up such frame structures. Another is cast in situ structures. The upper two things, the load bearing structure as well as the frame structure, both are cast in situ. That means built on site following the principles of its construction. Like any regular building you see around made of brick, concrete and the concrete is cast and is supported for setting as you can see with the props, the orange colored rods. We will go into details later. These are all cast in situ. But we have another kind of structure which is pre-cast structure. If you see the picture here, with the help of a crane, a entire wall is being put on site. It will go into some designed space where it will go and fit into. So, it is a precast structure. Now, you cannot make a brick wall like this and then you can pick it up with a crane and bring it and allow it to sit in a particular slot. Here, the entire thing is precast or industry made where the specification has been given and you can see there are gaps. So, they may be window location, they may be door location or whatever that was pre-planned. Based on that planning, the item has been fabricated on an industrial setup and it has been brought to site by some mechanism and now it is being put up by means of a crane to bring it to position. Now, here you can understand it is very much way and it has to be operated by help of a machine. So, you cannot do it by human load, human labor. You can have trust roof, 
you need large span. I have talked of large span. Large span means between two walls, the space is large. The gap is large. Think of an auditorium or a cinema hall where you have been to. The edge walls are quite far away. There you need a trust roof to hold the support on top of the roof. So that trust roof is a precast item which comes and sits on top of the roof. It may come in pieces. They may be assembled together like the unit what you see. So they will come one after the other and they will fill in the gaps against a maybe given framed structure. So here why I am discussing these is to make you aware that if you go on reading building materials one after the other, you may be at a loss what to, what to recommend for what type of building. So when you know you are going to design a load bearing structure, you have to remember the walls should be rigid enough to take the load of the wall itself. If you are planning from a frame for a frame structure, you can make any glass facades. So frame structure will give you that advantage. Whereas load bearing structure, you have to have brick after brick or build, building block after block so that the load gets transferred to the base or the foundation very uniformly so that no building defect comes up. And other is the precast structure where everything is pre-planned, every dimension are to be perfect. And you have to bring items which are made in the industry and they are put into the slots. So this is the implication why you need to know what kind of structure you are going to build. So you will be directed by your client when you will be practicing as an architect. What he wants, you have to know that. What is his budget, that also you have to know. Okay, we will come to that after it. So, when you are selecting a building material, as we discussed on the building type part, you now are aware that what is the type of building going to come up. Mostly it is pre mostly it is cast in situ structures. If it is a small structure, it is usually load bearing structure. If it is a multi-level structure, it will be a framed structure and what are the other aspects we need to know? So when we are sure that what kind of building is going to come up, now we have to look into the climatic condition. Where are you building this item, the structure, the built form? It may be a very rainy area, it may be a desert area, it may be a tropical climate, it may be hot and humid. So you have to look into what kind of weather or climate your building is going to face, what kind of temperature difference it is going to face because every material will have its expansion and contraction. So you have to remember or take a note of all the items because we are in a tropical country, we may not require so details. But if you are stepping out of the country and des designing for say Middle East country like Dubai, there the temperature difference is quite high. Or else if you go to Canada and built up where it is minus 40 degrees centigrade, you have to look into the expansion component of the building also, building material also. Next is the availability of raw material. So availability of the raw material reduces what component in the list? You see at the end it is cost. So if a material is locally available, then it automatically brings down the cost. Now if you have a client who is going to spend a lot, then you can always play with that component. So you can bring in Makarana marble and you can make something in the mid, something in the far east of our, our country. So, depending on the pocket size of the client, you can 
look into the budget of the client, you can look into the raw materials available. You can go for higher costing materials, but mostly the basic building material should be as per the available raw material because the next point as you see is the skill and workmanship. You need labor to bring up your building. So, when we are talking of labor or skill or workmanship whatever you say, you have to understand that the people of that particular area are with the knowledge of the or the traditional knowledge of building by that by that item. We in the plains go for brick where there are stone quarries people over there are, or there are mines there people are going for stone construction. So, stone construction is something brick construction is something where skill is important because only using one brick you cannot make a building, you have to know how to bind the building material to form your desired structure. The other component is time for construction. If you are asked to do something very quickly, so that is the delivery has to be given in a very short time, you may even choose precast items. because that is already made and you can only buy or bring it to your site and assemble it to achieve a short time construction. So, some precast items which are available in the market you have to go by multiples of that dimension to comply with your building plan and then you can come up with a fast construction. So, that gives you some restriction to your thought process or your design process, but yes you can achieve something in a given time. And obviously, the last point what you see is the aesthetics to every architect no two buildings look same. So, aesthetically what selection you are making? of the material is also very important. Remember here I am talking of material does not mean brick or stone or concrete or wood. It may be color, it may be texture, it may be construction technique which may give you a different aesthetical meaning to the building. A different color composition of the same building can make it more aesthetically pleasing. a different texture on different or in a within a surface different kind of color composition with the texture can give a different feeling to the client or the viewer. So, a building material when we are concentrating only on its use part we have to look into all these aspects and aesthetics is the final product where what we actually see or what a viewer sees. Now, coming to the very important point is following standards or codes for materials. Why it is so? Because when you are recommending a building material, be it brick, be it concrete, be it steel, be it wood, be it glass, you have to follow the standards. You have to give materials which are acknowledged by the by the body because in case a building fails the material will be a will be responsible for it. So, the building material is taking the load. So, if the material is not time tested, if the specifications are not followed, the building might collapse 
and maybe not to not in one day, but in a stipulated period of time, so that you are safe as an architect. So, you are always to recommend items which are acknowledged by the which are considered as building materials by the Indian standards for materials. Apart from this, there are also risks of fire. Your building may come across a fire incident where the building habitats needs to be evacuated out. So, your building must be capable of withstanding the fire for a considerable period of time. So, those things are only when they are complied, the Indian standards lists it in within its recommended list. So, you have to always remember that yes, exploration or experimentation is ok, but when you are looking for a profession where you are going to recommend the material, it should be supported by the Indian standards. Now, coming to the material properties, why this is important to know? First is the physical property that is the appearance. You all know, I know, I am sure for sure that you all know what is the color of a clay brick. At the same time, I am sure you all know that color of concrete is gray. Color of brick is red when it is made of clay. Again, texture. You can feel an item and say what it is. The dimension also is a physical property of a material and the form. Certain items which you cannot see, but you can feel. If you lift a brick, you can understand what is its weight. So, that is whether it is a lightweight material or a heavyweight material. So, when it is having higher density, we think that it is a homogeneous material, but in context of building materials, we always refer to the bulk density because materials are porous in nature, it has air inside it and so you we always refer or always we give the bulk density. Next is porosity, volume of pores within the material that changes the concept of density to bulk density. The next is permeability that is capability to allow fluid. Stone is very much hard. Stone does not allow water to move through it, whereas a brick allows. But if the stone has cracks in between, water will permeate through it. So, permeability is the capacity to allow fluid. Again, we need to know the mechanical properties that is the behavior under application of force, say compressive force tensile force like steel takes tension, any stone takes compression, brittleness of an item, glass is fragile, then toughness of the item, hardness and then creep and deformity. When subjected to a particular load for long time, a material may creep that means get deformed. It happens in case of plastics. Fatigue and failure, if keep on subjecting an item to pressure, item to force, it may not react all the time, it may not come back to its original form, rather it may break or fail. So, you have to know the mechanical property of the material also when you are recommending because you know what kind of forces it may be subjected to. Chemical property, it is usually the atmosphere onto which our building is exposed to. If you keep a iron item outside, it will surely rust if you are not protecting properly. In lesser amount of time, it will rust. 
one is the atmospheric action onto the building and the other is the environment where it is say in a laboratory chemical laboratory lots of acid fumes lots of uh, temperature differences the items have to face so there the selection of the materials should be such that the item should not get corroded by acid concrete gets withered away by petroleum so in a parking lot what should be the concrete grid concrete type then then the thermal property the heat transmission or the heat resistivity resisting capacity if it is a hot climate your inside heat inside temperature should be maintained and the outside temperature should not the heat should not come in so you need resistance insulating materials are doing marvel for country which i named like canada all cold countries have thick insulation not to allow the internal heat to go out similarly you need you may require to maintain the inner cool inner cold temperature to not to allow to go outside so your building material should be capable of taking these into account so whenever you are looking for climate is the very important part for this thermal component acoustics say a hospital is there if you make wide windows if you put some glass which will allow the sound to enter if you put double glass it will be different if you are inside an auditorium you don't need the outside noise to come in there also you need to have acoustical treatment again the optical property where transmission of light can be controlled you may have clear glass to allow full light you may have tinted glass so glass can come as or you may want complete darkness where opaque items will be will be should be recommended on such walls you want to guard the western heat western sun you have to have a solid wall so there you won't consider a window over there so this is what is optical property glass is the we use glass widely and wide variation of glass there and electrical property where flow of current is also to be considered so now you understand these material properties are also to be considered or should be thought when we are you are recommending a particular material for a purpose which is making a building so material properties material composition and the role of ingredients material making how they are made material types like bricks have so many types stone is not one stone there are so many stones material assembling how you will join the materials to make your building material defects because materials may come with defect so how to identify the defects or what are the types of defects material use where are where will you suggest what kind of material means which material is applicable where and alternate materials which have replaced the conventional or the traditional materials like we i told you in the very beginning we will learn clay and clay materials at the same time we will go for the alternate items that is fly ash brick compressed stabilized earth block compressed stabilized blocks and we will try to know what are the advantages disadvantages of of these and remember we also need to know whether they are in our standards or not now coming to references we have I have given you book names of three books which you may refer the next lecture we will enter into the materials so we will go into bricks directly we will go to clay products where we will start with bricks directly and then we will move to the tiles we will go to the alternate clay materials we will go into the how to be assembled what are the properties uh, how to understand which is what kind of brick where are the applications of it and next we will move to stone 
So, when we are covered with these two basic materials, then we will move as per our module or as per our schedule. So, thank you for today.